Hi everybody, it's meteorologist Joe Chaffee here on this uh, Friday morning early. I'm sorry I got started, got uh, had to get started a little late. Got a lot to talk about, folks. Uh, models uh, have started to come in and they are throwing a curveball to the East Coast. And uh, we're also we also have a new tropical depression that has developed uh, east of the um, I'm sorry uh, off the African coast. Uh, and then there is a other another tropical wave that's uh, to the west of that that's moving across that uh, weather models are getting aggressive with and could develop into a tropical depression or a tropical storm storm over the weekend and there's some possibility that it could could uh, threaten the leeward islands <clears throat> early next week and places to the west later on next week so uh, we're going to start right off with jose because it really the GFS was nuts tonight. Okay, so let's just put it that way. Um, glad to see everybody jumping on already. Um, so this is great. So hello to everyone. And, you know, as we uh, just, uh, in case you just uh, are tuning, uh, tuning in, got a lot to talk about here, folks. So uh, let's look at Jose, which right now uh, is a tropical storm. Uh, it doesn't look all that well organized. It's been dealing with some uh, wind shear issues and also issues with uh, cooling water that it had just gone over and upwelled. So uh, it, it's the convection comes and then it goes and now we're in a phase where it seems to be bursting up again. Uh, but uh, all indications are is that this this will strengthen uh, as it uh, continues its track uh, toward the west northwest. So we we'll probably should see this. Um, I think once it gets to the left of uh, 70 west and gets up above uh, 25 north again, it'll uh, be in a water that uh, will be warmer and uh, less shear going on. So that will uh, bring in a trend of strengthening. Now, uh, let's jump right to the GFS model tonight because I have to tell you, I was actually quite I was shocked <laughs> to see this. Um, but we're going to, uh, and I think you're going to be kind of shocked to see this. Uh, weather models late this afternoon were trending westward, except right at the very end when they turned it up toward 40 and 70. Well, we're seeing that trend to the west continue. Uh, we can, uh, uh, we'll go to the GFS, forget the NAM for now. Because I think we need to take a look at this and analyze it as best we can. So I'm kind of doing this on the fly here. And we have this west-northwest motion. So we are now uh, into Saturday afternoon. And at that point, we start to see it turn northward, which it does. And here we are now at Monday afternoon. And it's moving north-northwest to north. And up it goes, uh, just over eastern Long Island now. That is a significant shift to the west of the prior run. So here is uh, Tuesday evening, and I'll just show you the old run in case you didn't see it. I'll go back uh, one run, and that's where it was on the uh, 18Z run, and that was at uh, 2 o'clock this afternoon. <clears throat> this was the run from mid-morning. So we've gone from this to this, which would be a situation of just maybe some fringe gales coming to Long Island and maybe coastal New Jersey and perhaps a band or two of rain and no big deal uh, to, to this. <clears throat> and that is a significant shift uh, to the northwest. Um, th this is a, a big development, and it's also one that I want to be very cautious with because it could be just this one run and we might go back to an eastward shift on the next one run I you know I want to see I want to see several runs in a row of this before I you know bite the hook but it certainly would suggest that um, you know extreme caution is now advised with regards to all this um, we are at Tuesday night which is the at the end of day five so the the error uh, possibility is still pretty large we could still wind up with something that goes out um, 100 to 150 miles east of this position and we would have um, you know minimal impact to the northeast or it could even go further to the west i mean i can't see why that 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 part of the argument couldn't be correct too 
so let's look at the upper air here and see what's a, what's going on because uh, it's a bit of a significant change. And I think what's happening is as we roll back, you know, we have this remnant weak trough from Irma that is just kind of lingering there uh, in the northeast. It, it's it's weak, but it's there. And I guess the model uh, is picking up on that and uh, lifting it up much closer to the coast. I mean, to me, that seems pretty simple uh, with regards to what's happening. You, you don't need very much. Sometimes it seems like you do, but, you know, in this particular instance, it's just enough, apparently, and, and in the wrong position uh, in order to bring this up uh, almost west of due north, right up the coast uh, to t over eastern Long Island and into southern New England. Now, again, let me let me stress this. Because this is one run now. We, you know, if if we're still doing this tomorrow evening, um, I think then we have to seriously consider the, uh, you know, the, that the threat is something um, tangible and real. But for now, you know, I just want to, you know, kind of take a step back and calm down. The other thing is, and you know, this is this is um, this is something that we have to remember. We are not dealing with a system that is coming into up the coast with a deep trough. The trough at best is very weak. And in fact, overall, there's a ridge position here in the eastern part of the United States. This is not going to be moving very fast. So you know, I question, uh, I'm questioning the depth, the, 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 the pressure here on the uh, GFS, which is in the 950s and actually starts to weaken as it moves north northeastward. Um, and that would make sense. Now, um, the other part of this equation is whether this might get energized a bit in a way that a winter cyclone gets energized, what we, you know, would be called, you know, baroclinic effect. And uh, therefore, it could hold its strength in terms of pressure. The wind field may gradually broaden out here. So uh, why don't we look at the surface winds that the, that the GFS at least is generating out of this. And I'm going to get uh, even tighter. We'll go to that tight northeast view so that you can you can see what it does. And, you know, it certainly brings every bit of gales uh, along the New Jersey coast and over Long Island back to about New York City and then on up into southern New England, uh, if this is correct. And that is the big if. Um, we are, you know, I'm kind of almost dumbfounded by this whole thing, uh, to tell you the truth. Now, let's... Um, Let's go to the wider view because I want to show you the other thing that's happening here. And we're going to go to the Western Atlantic. And, well, actually, you know, I may have to go even wider than this. Um, we'll go to the North Atlantic first. And we'll start at 24 hours. You know, there's two, we have the new tropical depression that's uh, just southwest of the Cabo Verde Islands. And then we have a second wave that's ahead of it. And if you notice here, uh, down around 10 degrees north and about 50 degrees west or so, that all of a sudden a low pops up uh, on um, Saturday and then begins to strengthen in very quickly uh, as it approaches the southern part of the Leeward Islands. So this is the, the uh, second, the, day, the uh, late afternoon run did the same thing. Takes it into the northeastern Caribbean as a hurricane um, over Puerto Rico or the Dominican Republic, and this is a, this is as far out as we have at the moment. Um, so this would be the second um, system that we're dealing with. And by the way, notice what happens uh, to Jose, which comes in and as it weakens, and then it gradually does a little bit of a loop back westward because this big high is building up to the north. So uh, an another significant change here with regards to um, what's happening with uh, Jose. So needless to say, we have a lot of stuff happening here. <laughs> you know, it, it's just amazing. The, uh, the uh, tropical depression that just formed, uh, the you know, conditions aren't overly favorable for this to develop. Um, it is forecast to become a tropical storm, but the model doesn't really do very much with it because there is going to be some strong southwesterly shear that's going to extend down into the central tropical Atlantic. And basically it rips that system apart and tries to turns it northward and then it just disappears. 
that I'm I'm less con I'm not really too concerned about that that new depression. I'm more concerned with whatever pops up with the system that's out in front of it, um, with, with um, something that's going to develop here over the weekend and into early next week. Uh, why don't we take a look at the uh, wide satellite view? Well, first off, here's that new t tropical depression, and you can see it here. It's just southwest of the, the Cabo Verde Islands. It looks pretty well developed at this point. There's a little bit of moderate easterly shear, but that's probably not going to stop it. The lead wave is uh, looking a bit healthier in the last few hours, and you can see it here with some sh uh, showers and thunderstorms, but it's nothing like uh, the depression that's behind it. So this is going to take a little more time uh, to get going. And here's the uh, water vapor imagery. And you can see, by the way, in the central Atlantic that there is a trough here uh, with the, these clouds that are coming up from south to north. That's, you know, th th this first wave is not going to develop until it gets by this. And that's why it pops it up somewhere in, in, in just southeast of the, the Leeward Islands or the northern Woodwards. And, of course, you have Jose uh, up uh, east of the Bahamas and, and moving uh, on a course west-northwest. And by the way, you can see the clouds in northeastern Gulf of Mexico moving southwest to northeast, and there's an upper low uh, that's moving into Louisiana. So the, the steering currents along the east coast are gradually going to be turning uh, to the to the south by not a, a whole lot, but in terms of speed. But it, we are going to see um, we are going to see that uh, turn over to the south. The dog just said hi. So. Let me uh, come back to you because I'm going to have to just kind of keep this short for tonight. Um, but uh, again, just to remember that this was one run of the uh, GFS model that we're looking at at the moment. Uh, we are going to, I want to wait till we have um, a couple of more, a couple of more runs that um, to look at. Also, Bear in mind, we don't. I'm not particularly sure exactly how strong a system Jose is going to be because it, you know, right now it's under hurricane strength, and uh, I don't know uh, that it may not get much beyond a category one. In which case, once it goes north of 35 north, if it's not moving at a, a whole, you know, at a great speed, it is going to be fighting colder water and uh, possibly weaken. You can see how happy he is to see me. Uh, so uh, just bear that in mind as uh, we go forward here. There's just a, a whole lot uh, for us to, to deal with. I, I will uh, do another live stream in the morning, and uh, we will uh, um, update you on what all the overnight model runs have done, including the European. I want to see that. You know what? We can probably take a quick look at the Canadian uh, because um, at least it's out, so it's something to look at. Just a second here. Uh, but we'll take a look at the Canadian model. And I'm going to just change the region. And let's let's get to it's only out to 36 hours, unfortunately. So we're not going to be able to see <clears throat> very much of it. The, the track is at least into Saturday morning is still pretty much to the west northwest, so at least that part of the Canadian seems to be consistent with the GFS at this stage of the game. Uh, the NAM for what that was worth, um, we'll jump over to the NAM model. You know the NAM has been consistently to the left for the last number of runs, and that kind of concerned me late this afternoon when I did see it. Um, but you can see it here; it kind of coils its way up northward. It only goes out till Monday morning at this point, so we can't really see beyond that. But you can kind of get a flavor for where how the surface is that, you know, it looks like it's pointing straight north from here. If we were able to take it out beyond 84 hours, we probably would see it moving northward for a fair distance. Uh, but um, let me just end it here. Uh, the dog is uh, begging to go out, and um, i got to take care of that. So uh, have a great uh, night. We'll see you in the morning. And uh, we'll update you. I may do it a little earlier than usual. Okay, so perhaps maybe around 9 o'clock tomorrow morning we'll update all this. Have a good evening.